Hello, I'm James Harvey, the professor of music theory at the College of Southern Nevada with 5-Minute Music Theory. Let's start that timer and head over here to calculate some sixths and sevenths using the complementary intervals method. So we've used the counting half steps method with seconds and thirds, the BFF method for fourths and fifths. For sixths and sevenths, we use the complementary intervals method, which is actually quite easy once you get it down. At first, the concept might take a little while to ingrain itself into your brain, but once you get it, you'll be very thankful that you know how to do this. So let's take an interval like this, for example, and we see that from an A up to an F sharp, if we counted, A, B, C, D, E, F is six fingers, so it's a sixth. That's when you stop and you go, hey, I know I need to use the complementary intervals method for this interval. And remember, the concept of a complementary interval is that two intervals, when added together that equal an octave, are complements of each other. So we can use that logic to find bigger intervals by finding smaller intervals instead. So what that means is that I'm imagining an F sharp here. So now I've created an octave from the upper note. You can do it from the lower note or the upper note, whichever one is easier for you. If there is one that's easier, that you'll end up with the same answer either way. So that's now a perfect octave. Now the logic is that this interval, this sixth, when added to this interval, the smaller interval, which is a third, should equal an octave. So now we just need to figure out the smaller interval and we, and we can uh, indirectly determine the bigger interval. From an F sharp up to an A, if we counted half steps, and again, I'm doing these two lower notes, F sharp to A is three half steps, which is a minor third. The complement of a minor third is a major sixth from A to F sharp is a major sixth. It's, it's really as easy as that. Some of you might be going, what? So <laughs> watch the supplementary materials and, uh, and maybe this a couple of times, and I guarantee this will be really easy once you get this down. So let's do a descending interval this time. How about from a D down to an E, which is a seventh. If you take my word for it, count, use your fingers, you'd figure out that's a seventh. Again, that number never changes once you figure it out. If I imagine an octave below that upper note, which is another D. This smaller interval plus this bigger interval should equal that octave. So now I just need to figure out the interval from a D down, or a, sorry, an E down to a D, which is much easier. It's a major second. The complement of a major second is a minor seventh. Therefore, this interval is a minor seventh. Boom. Easy as that. Let's do a little bit of a trickier one. How about from an E flat four up to a C sharp five. So you might look at this and go, ew, <laughs> right away. Uh, it's, it's not as hard as you might think. So this time I'm gonna do an upper note just to show you that it works both ways. So again, what I've done is I've created an imaginary perfect octave with which I can use to figure out the bigger of these two intervals. From E to C of any kind is always going to be a sixth. So we know that's a sixth and we know this is a third from C to E. The half steps distance from C sharp up to E is only two half steps, which is smaller than a minor third. A minor third is three half steps, but this is two. So it's smaller than a minor third, and it's still a third, therefore it's a diminished third, which means that the complement is an augmented sixth. And we pretty quickly figured out a pretty tricky interval of that augmented sixth using the complementary intervals method. So if this doesn't snap and click right away for you, just watch this a few times and watch some of the supplementary materials. Um, and as we go along, I'll be adding more and more supplementary materials. If you have any questions, put them down below. Uh, you can tweet me whatever you want to do about this. I'm here to help. Uh, it's really not that difficult once you get it figured out. I know sometimes it's hard to get these concepts down, but I promise it makes it so much easier when you get this figured out to figure out your sixths and sevenths. Thank you very much.